Hi friends, it's Lella. So I have this idea where I reread my favorite books from childhood. And during that, making the list of all those books, I realized that I can actually pinpoint which books I read in what year. So rather than making this a big video where I pick and choose, I'm gonna select a specific age and read all of my favorite books from that year of my life. So I thought the most fitting age to start with would be fourth grade when I was nine, which was exactly 20 years ago. My child's about to turn nine, and I realized that when I was nine, that is the year that I really got into reading. I had always read before that, but I'll tell you a little bit about me at nine years old, and then tell you about the books that I was reading in grade four, and I'll take you to where I went to school in grade four. Here's my elementary school. So basically like the grades, you kind of moved through the school with the grades. You started at grade four, and then grade five, grade six, grade seven was over in the portable. So we're talking about fourth grade. So that would have been right in there. But I think if we look through the front doors, we can see the library, which is where I spent all my time in fourth grade because I had no friends. Yeah, it's still there. You just can't see into it, obviously. Oh, I see some books. Do you? Habits of happy. <laughs> Yeah, those are all the ones Liam was reciting to us. So I guess Liam's on track to learning how you learned, so that's pretty Mommy, cool. that's not how I learned. This school isn't still set in 1999. Are you sure? <laughs> Did you think time had just stopped here? Okay, so in fourth grade I would have been on this side of the school. There's two playgrounds. Oh, it has not changed. No, it's different. When I was here it was like primary colors. So over there, we would play kickball. And I was the kickball champion. And that's a swing I would do backflips off of. Oh, and you can walk up. There's like a hillside up there. There's um, like long jump and what's the other one called? Triple jump. Triple jump. I guess fourth grade would be the first time that I did track and field. I was really bad at the jumping ones, but I was really good at discus and shot put. All right, I'm gonna go find my classroom. This would have been third grade. And over here was fourth grade. So I would say right here, all by myself and read books because fourth grade was the first year that I wasn't in class with my best friend. Kindergarten grade one, grade two, and grade three, I had my best friend, we'll call her B. And then fourth grade was the first year I wasn't in class with her and I suddenly had no friends. Like because we were in different classes, we apparently couldn't be friends. And this is when I've spent pretty much every morning after school and lunch in the library and I really got into reading. And apparently writing because this was my first great novel written in fourth grade, nine years old. It's called The Easter Egg Hunt, and they got them laminated. On the day of the Easter Egg Hunt. And just around the corner was a uh, tetherball, which was just my shit in fourth grade. But they don't leave them up. There was like someone, oh my God, they left one up. Cause they could get stolen so easily. I remember somebody would have to climb up there and click it in every morning. And it would be like a thing, the girl who like got to do it. This is scary. Oh yeah, terrifying. This is the exact same equipment from 20 years ago. So fourth grade was spending a lot of time by myself and doing a lot of reading. So my favorite books at this time would be The Babysitter's Club. I think that was like the number one thing I was reading. I don't have any copies still, so we're gonna have to swing by my childhood bookstore and pick something up. Fourth grade was also the year that we read Hatchet. So I just ordered a copy for myself from Book Outlet and it's like some kind of anniversary edition that I'll show you. Fourth grade is when everyone was reading Harry Potter and um, the Bailey School kids. Basically my reading taste was the exact same as it is now. I wanted realistic stuff. I didn't want to read about magic and monsters and all of the popular series that everyone was reading. I also this year read all of Judy Bloom. So if we're reading my favorite books, Blubber was definitely one of them and I do have a copy of that at home. I don't totally remember what it was about, but I think it's just about like a chubby girl in 
elementary school, which I definitely connected with. I do remember reading all of the other ones, um, Are You There God, It's Me, Margaret, but of all the Judy Bloom, Blubber was the one that I just loved. I know you're probably thinking of some other childhood books that I've mentioned are my favorites, but they're not quite, we're not quite there yet in my reading life. So definitely let me know down below if you wanna see more of these videos. So I think my childhood bookstore, the book bin, is um, actually closed today because it's Sunday. But I'll swing by and I'll just show you what it looks like and then I'll stop by Value Village or Chapters, which were here 20 years ago and were my favorite places to be. So I'll see what I can find that I remember from fourth grade. Hopefully we'll find a Babysitter's Club book. That's like the number one goal. What do you think, am I talented? So I think I kind of wrote that story and I wrote a couple poems that were put into this book and I got to go to the Young Authors Conference and meet a bunch of other, I think, fourth and fifth graders around town. And I actually had a, oh no, I was gonna say my first boyfriend, my second boyfriend, because <laughs> I had a boyfriend in grade three. I can tell you all about him later. But in fourth grade, I met this boy from the Young Authors Conference. I think his name was Devin and he was literally my boyfriend for like, three days. So though I didn't have any real friends in my school, I had some friends from the Young Authors Conference. I had a boyfriend for three days. And um, I had a lot of friends from Girl Guides. Uh, I might as well introduce you to my oldest friend that I'm still like in contact with. I'm filming a video where I reread my childhood favorite books. Oh yeah. So right now I'm doing fourth grade, which is the grade we met. I was looking through my memory box and I found these ones. Oh God. Oh God. <laughs> that was us. Oh, Brie has a bakery too. That's why I'm here. That's Brie. Hi guys. <laughs> and then I think this was with you. Yeah, it was. 100%. Even though we weren't this best friends. This is Pathfinders, so this is not when we met, but oh, it's. Oh, yeah. that would have been a couple years. Yeah, I was gonna say we look a little old. Yeah, so this is Pathfinders. But yeah, I actually remember taking these, Jesus. Yeah, this is when we used to go and- uh, Just go to the mall. Go to the mall, and remember we had that one, this? Yeah. This is when we went that one time that our mission was to get as many bags as we could. Bags? Yeah, because we wanted to be like, you know, in the movies when they had, like the ladies come out with all oh the like- Oh my God. And we wanted to be like them, and so we went and like went to all the stores that we could and got as many bags as we could. Oh my god, I do not remember that, that's funny. <laughs> what were you reading in like elementary school? Do you remember? Like extracurricular reading or like what I actually read in fourth grade? Both. So fourth grade I read Secret Land of Og. Yes, no, that's familiar. That's the one where like they, there's like a secret like troll village underneath their playhouse. Wait, I remember that. I'm stopping at Value Village. This is the same one that I went to when I was nine. So I'm gonna see if they have any kids books that I recognize because I only held on to a couple books from childhood in my book collection and we'll see if I can spot anything else. All right, I saw a lot of books that were familiar but that I wasn't really reading, just people, other kids my age they were reading. But I did find some books for future videos. I didn't find a single Babysitter's Club, which is so weird because I remember being nine and it was like you had to sort through hundreds to find the one that you didn't have yet. I did find the spin-off series though um, that's set in California. My favorite character, Dawn, I think it's kind of about her. I remember reading them for sure. I don't know if I have to read them in order, but I grabbed Dawn's. Let's see if this came out. Yep, 1999. I also can't believe I forgot about Mary Kate and Ashley. I don't know if, what age I was really, 1999. Here's some mementos from grade four. Except not the photos, as we discovered are from years and years later in reality. This is the year, oops, I did it again, came out. This is a bookmark that I made in fourth grade. And here is my library card. Okay, so at this point, I should be showing you a picture of me from fourth grade. Weirdly, I have a ton of pictures from third grade, a ton of pictures from fifth grade, but I don't know where I was at in fourth grade, I guess you know, busy having no friends. What I'm gonna be reading this week, like I said, 
blubber. I found Sarah Plain and Tall, which I recognize, I don't remember a lot of, but I recognize this, I recognize the title, and I know that I liked it, even though I don't remember what it is. Like I showed you, Mary Kate and Ashley, I've got California Dreams, Dawn was my favorite Babysitter's Club character. Then, Hatchet. This is the one that I found from Book Outlet. This is the 30th anniversary edition. It's bendy and moleskin-like and feels really cool. And my last great find, was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which I was obsessed with. I don't know what the purpose of this is. Part of me, yeah, wants to feel nostalgic. Part of me wants to see if these books hold up. Part of me wants to see like, if what I was reading at nine years old was appropriate. I'm also gonna spend this week watching the movies that I would have been watching at nine years old. It's just gonna be a big nostalgic week. We're gonna start with Sarah Plain and Tall because I just want to remember what this is. 64 whole pages. I forgot what this book was about, um, and it's about these kids whose mother died and they get a new mom named Sarah. Something I'm really excited about is the feeling of remembering something. Like, I want to read a passage that I remember reading before. Like, I know I've read these books before and liked them, but I don't remember like specific paragraphs so i'm excited to like feel that feeling of i've read this before okay this was very sweet and i didn't even realize before starting this challenge that this is exactly what i needed right now this is perfect and sweet and remains unproblematic to this day although it's a little strange that this man found his new wife Sarah, who's plain and tall, by sending a letter just to some random woman across the country. Now, I'm gonna watch a nice nostalgic movie. I could not tell you the last time I just sat down and turned on Netflix. So at nine years old, we definitely didn't have cable. So movies were our number one, like we always had movies. We went to Blockbuster like every Friday and got like three movies. I also had an extensive VHS collection, which means I watched Spice World pretty much every day. My movie taste was a little mature. Looking through movies that came out in 1999, I can tell you the ones I should have been watching. Tarzan, Toy Story 2, I don't know, baby geniuses. <laughs> Here's what I was actually watching. Never Been Kissed. I remember seeing that in the theater. It became my favorite movie for the rest of my childhood, and Drew Barrymore was my absolute favorite actress. She's All That, 100% watched that. 10 Things I Hate About You was such a classic favorite. Drop Dead Gorgeous, Idle Hands, oh my god, I loved Idle Hands. Jawbreaker, that one is so nostalgic. Dick, ah, oh, I didn't realize that came out that year. That solidified my love of Kirsten Dunst. My husband's home with popcorn. You ready to find out what 1999 movie we're watching? Sure. Idle Hands. Never, don't even know what it is. It's the guy who can't control his hand. Devin Sawa. Jessica Alba. Oh, bish, get ready. It's just coffee, okay? Drop the knitting needles and put your hands on your head now. I can't. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. I am not the only freaking out. So I just stopped at the thrift store on my way home. The same one that I went to earlier this week, just casually browsing for books. I wasn't even looking for books for this video because I've already picked all the books for this video. And right in the middle of the YA shelf, not only did I find Babysitter Club books, but I found the super specials. I am so happy right now. I first want to note how thick these were to me when I was nine years old. I still haven't been able to find a traditional Babysitter's Club book, but they must be so skinny. This is only 200 pages. I remember reading these and thinking like, oh my God, these are so big. I vividly remember reading both of these. This is actually the very first one that ever happened, which obviously makes me want to read it. But this one 
has all the characters, Mallory and Jesse. When I think in this one, did we not have them or were they just not allowed on the trip because they were still so young? I don't even know how old the babysitters are in these books. So if you don't know the babysitters club, I will introduce you to each girl and kind of what I remember about her. Christy was the tomboy. Marianne was like the quiet, sensitive, um, romantic one. We've got Claudia. She is artsy and messy. It can be hard on different covers to tell Stacy and Dawn apart, but Stacy's more of like the popular boy crazy girl and Dawn is like the hippie of the group. Very like free spirit and vegan food. Mallory, I think she liked to write. And then we've got Jessie, who is the ballerina. So I'm gonna read this tonight. Side note, I think the Series Club is currently being re-brought out as a TV show. All right, I'm 64 pages in and I'm feeling very nostalgic. I love it so much. I remember this book. There's some questionable word choices in here that I don't think you would see in current day literature. It's just interesting. So as expected, this book was great. I feel weird writing childhood books, books for children, but it was really great. And it makes me more excited for the Babysitter's Club show. I think it's coming to Netflix. I'm really excited to see what they do with the characters. And I definitely hope and assume, like with that many characters, we have to have a queer character on the show. You guys might not know, but the author, Anne M. Martin, was actually gay. I think it was probably a little too revolutionary to include a queer character in a middle grade series, especially in 1988 when that one came out. I'm not sure when the first one came out. Anyway, I think it's easy. It would be easy to make Christy gay, but I think Mallory. Mallory could be like our new bisexual icon. Anyway, as far as does that book hold up, I think definitely, except for the fact that some of the language is out of date. All right, the next book I'm gonna go ahead and tackle is Blubber. So this is probably the first book that I ever read with a fat main character. Since then, I've read a lot more. Some of my favorite books have good like fat representation. I definitely appreciate books that have fat rep and I think it's really important for especially, you know, the YA and middle grade age range. It's important to see yourself in books in general, and that conversation is so much bigger than just seeing fat bodies in books, but I do think that that's important. But I can't really remember, like, if this book really did something for me at this age. I remember it fondly. I remember it being a favorite of all the Judy Bloom. This was the best one. And I don't know if that's because I saw myself in it or because it did something for me. I don't think the latter is true because controversial uh, opinion or perspective here. I never, I've never had a problem with my size. It's everyone else in the world having a problem with my size. I've always been the fattest girl in the room. I was the fattest girl in fourth grade. I'm the fattest mom when we go to like mom get togethers, school events. That's just me. And I get a lot of comments asking like how I have so much confidence and I I know you're coming from such a like a positive place with that, but it just further implies that I shouldn't like myself because I'm fat. And I think that's what a lot of girls had a problem with with me around this age. Listen, there was a lot of other things to not like about me. I was loud and obnoxious and annoying and I lied a lot. <laughs> and all of that came from specific experiences and don't need to get into it. I also like smelled really bad in elementary school. And that's because like I didn't know personal hygiene that well. It was never really taught to me and we also didn't really have heating and, and a hot water tank and uh, a washing machine growing up. So there were a lot of reasons not to want to be my friend at this age. But I think from my perspective, I just thought no one wanted to be friends with me because I was the fat girl. And it's actually funny because I ended up having a conversation years later with 
a group of the girls who bullied me uh, at this time. And at the end of the conversation was concluded that they didn't hate me because I was fat. They hated me because I didn't hate myself. Let that sink in. In their minds, these insecure fourth, fifth, sixth graders hated things about themselves as women are taught to hate and pick apart every little thing about themselves. If they looked like me, they would have hated themselves and they couldn't understand why I didn't. So they felt the need to knock me down a peg and show me my place and that I shouldn't be happy with the way that I looked. With all that said, I recognize that I should lose weight, like my entire life. I should have weighed less than I did. I get it. But as far as like looks wise, I just, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. And there's just such an issue in our society with looks and aesthetics. And I hope that reading this is a positive experience as an adult and that looking back this isn't like super problematic. So I just finished Blubber and it was fine. The first thing that I forgot is that it's not actually told from Blubber's perspective. This book is about a girl named Linda um, who gets referred to as Blubber. She's doing a school project on whales and talks about Blubber and then the kids decide to nickname her Blubber and just make her life hell at school. And I thought the book was from her perspective, but it's not. It's from another girl's perspective who is part of the group bullying her. Now, is there anything inherently wrong with this? No. Besides, yet again, another book that constantly refers to Indians, which is obviously out of date. I guess something different in middle grade compared to books designated for older age ranges is it doesn't really give you any commentary on the situation. Like it's not trying to teach you something. I feel like with a lot of middle grade, it's just a story. And then the intent is for you as a child to, you know, come to your own conclusions. Middle grade books definitely have important things to say and they are out to teach things, but they don't say them. So this book didn't say anything about how to treat fat people or how you shouldn't bully people. But basically what happens in this book is in the last like 10 pages, the main character becomes the one who's bullied. And I think the intent is to show that you should have empathy for people. But like the only way you can have empathy is if you've experienced what the person being bullied has experienced. I don't know about the messaging in here. I really liked a thing that happened right at the beginning where Linda was eating some kind of dessert in her lunch and the class was making fun of her because she shouldn't be eating that way because that's the reason she's fat. And then it gets thrown around the room and then a boy picks it up and eats it and nobody has anything to say. And I think that's something so just like reflective of our society. People pretend that they're commenting on your fatness because they're concerned about your health. But they're not concerned about your health, they're concerned about your fatness. Like we've all seen the Instagram picture with a skinny girl holding an entire pizza or a thin hot girl in a fast food commercial eating a giant burger and that stuff is like hot and funny and sexy. It's like, oh, this skinny girl can like take down a whole burger. Like that's an attractive thing apparently but if a fat girl was doing the same thing then we're glorifying obesity it's just funny to think that like i am some women's like worst nightmare <laughs> the worst thing that they could possibly imagine is weighing 300 pounds like they would die as far as does this book hold up Uh, I wouldn't want Liam reading this because I don't think much was accomplished by the end of it. Not all the kids 
had a change of heart or learned how to behave. And I wouldn't really want a fat kid in this day and age like I was to read it because I don't think it really had any good messaging for that either. I am so stoked right now. I just found the box of photos from my childhood. There's not that many left and I should really put them in an album, but I knew I had them in a box somewhere and I have been looking this entire week and I just found them. I haven't even looked through them yet because I wanted a kind of, I don't know, live reaction, but there's so many I'm not going to show you because they're not from this time period. I can't believe we've gone this far in the video and I haven't shown you a picture of myself at nine years old. Here's the first thing from around nine years old. We had cats. We never got our cats um, fixed when I was a kid, which is horrifying. Um, so we had a lot of kittens. The most, we, we actually had two cats at the same time. We had a mother and a daughter named Star and Jersey, and they both had kittens literally in the same week. So we had two full grown cats and we had, I think nine kittens. And then we kept one of those. His name was Max and we had him forever and he was striped. All of our cats previous had been black and white or just black. So I'm just trying to think of like what I looked like at this age. I had chopped off my hair in third grade to look like my best friend. And so at this point it would have been like dirty blonde and like shoulder length. I don't know why it's such a struggle to find something from this year. Like even on my computer, I found lots of pictures from my childhood, but the only one that I found from this year, actually I'll show you that one. It's of me and Brie, the girl that I introduced you to, which is so weird. This is the year we met. And yeah, I was making that face on purpose, but the choker is a lot. This one has to be from fourth grade because in fifth grade I dyed my hair. And I think fifth grade might have been where I got glasses too, so this has to be fourth grade. Oh my gosh. Those little pigtails? I mean, I don't look that different. <laughs> okay, yeah, there wasn't as many here as I had hoped, but there was a couple for you. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start Hatchet, which I'm very excited about. So I just finished Hatchet and this is like the perfect book. It's definitely one of my favorite books of all time and remains that way. Not just like a favorite book from childhood, but it's just a favorite book in general. If you somehow don't know, it follows a kid who is in an airplane and it crashes and the pilot dies and he just has to survive in the forest um, on his own and he learns like what he can eat and how to build shelter and how to make fire when all he essentially has is a hatchet. This book is incredible and perfect and I 100% want Liam to read it someday soon. Very excited that I read this and feel all the nostalgic vibes but also just get to reread something that's so freaking well done. Okay we're at my favorite place. Can you see it? It's chapters. Uh, it's called Indigo. Chapters doesn't exist anymore. Okay, sorry. When I was nine, it was Chapters. And my favorite place in the mall was to go to the pretzel place and go to the bookstore. And then the pretzel place closed around this time. And now, 20 years later, the pretzel place has reopened. And I'm literally just going here today to get a pretzel to relive my childhood. It's funny because I've talked about books and movies and TV and stuff, but I never talked about the music we were listening to in 1999. Yeah. Okay, also perfect timing. We have these game nights with our friends like once a month and we always like to bring like a new game. And while we were at Chapters, I found this one called That's So 90s and it's like trivia about the 90s. As someone born in 1990, this pleases me immensely. So it's like questions about Toy Story or Mrs. Doubtfire or Arnold Schwarzenegger. Art and literature. Which author wrote the intriguing book, Holes, published in 1998? Do you know? It's so weird that that would be a question because that's going to be one of the books I'd read in another one of these episodes. Oh. 
right, speaking of food memories with that pretzel, the thing that I was drinking, yes, at nine years old, was um, ice caps. This is actually the year that ice caps were invented. Well, thank goodness for Tim Horton's iced cappuccino. It's the new perfect summer treat that's available right now. It's creamy, smooth, it's deep down cool, and it's just $1.69. I think around this time is when my mom became like manager of all the Tim Hortons in town, so I would always get an ice cap whenever I asked. And I haven't had one in probably a couple years. And this is probably responsible for the fact that I stopped growing a couple years later. Anyway, the next book I'm going to tackle is food related as well. It's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The original adaptation was out at this time and I probably watched it soon after reading it. I remember being annoyed by certain things that were changed from the book to the movie but I can't remember what those things are. Yes, apparently at nine years old I was a film critic. Seriously, nothing has changed. Like I'm the same person 20 years later. And you know what? Thinking about this, it is still kind of things that I really enjoy. Books with contests. This has to do with like kids who have to find a golden ticket in their chocolate bars to visit the chocolate factory. I like books about a group of unlikable characters. And I like books that are set in the real world, real life scenarios, but with a hint of magic. And when you go into the chocolate factory, there's little magical things that can happen. I have a feeling there's going to be some language in this as well that is not currently appropriate or preferred, but we'll see. So I just finished Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and this was my least favorite reading experience of the week. Not my least favorite book, mind you, but my least favorite experience only because it does not feel like 20 years has passed since I've experienced that story. I've seen the original film, I wanna say at least twice since reading that book. And I've seen the newer version, obviously, when it came out in like 2005, I wanna say. I've seen that at least two or three times. And it's just crazy how similar they stayed to the book. There are a couple differences, uh, things that the movie added, like the movie went into a couple extra rooms that the book didn't go into. Like my favorite scene, the fizzy lifting drinks, that's not in the book. Definitely enjoyable, definitely holds up over time. I think there was only um, one use of the word midget that wouldn't really fly, at least not in books that I would prefer, you know, my child to be reading. So it's good, I guess, that I now remember all the content in case he ever wants to read it. Also, in a super weird coincidence, CinemaSins just this week posted a video of everything wrong with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the movie, which is s strange. <laughs> All right, friends, we're on to my final book for reading my favorite books from fourth grade. Though I do remember this book, I know I've read it, I can't say that this was a favorite. It's more so the Mary-Kate and Ashley series that was my favorite. I loved Mary-Kate and Ashley so deeply. Uh, yes, I did have a favorite. It was Ashley. Yes, I did have a favorite movie. It was... Getting There, I think it was called. Yep, that's me, behind the wheel. Cool. No, very cool. Day one, the big road trip. It pains me to think that there are so many of you who only know of Mary-Kate and Ashley, maybe because like Mary-Kate's that tiny smoking girl who's married to that old guy. But for me, these girls were my childhood. I remember them going through like Mary Kate's eating disorder and like it being publicized and I remember the days when nobody knew their brother and sister and now Elizabeth Olsen is like a household name. I cut my hair like the Olsen twins. I styled my hair like the Olsen twins. I wanted to be an Olsen triplet and it's weird to think that I must have assumed that back in the day, these girls were responsible for their entire career. Like, I probably assumed they wrote this book. But in reality, like, 
somebody has rights to their likeness and you know made them into dolls and started a clothing line and probably started 20 million different things without them actually being very involved the actual author is melissa metz who are you what else have you written is this what you wanted to be penning at this time there was marykatenashley.com do you think that's still a thing oh it's Elizabeth and James now. I guess this was kind of the start of AOL too. Because there's an AOL keyword. In Canada, we didn't use AOL because it's American Online. But we had MSN, which I started to use when I was 10. I can tell you all about that another time. This is the case of the rock star's secret. It is very large print. And it's first person. I'll read this and report back. <sighs> well... That was practically unreadable. That is the longest it has ever taken me to read 80 pages in my life. I think I probably read that slower than I did 20 years ago. Oh, it was a struggle. So basically, Mary Kate and Ashley are in a band. This rock star died and left behind his mansion to open up like a place for people to play music and stuff. But the only rules in his will that a band has to play on his birthday in order for him to win the mansion. And the band has to have a pair of twins in it. And it has to have a person with red hair and braces. Oh, and they have to be 10 years old. <laughs> what? I probably thought this was so cool when I was nine. But somebody's sabotaging them. Plot twist. Stealing their instruments. Dyeing the red-haired kid's hair black. And spoilers, it was the neighbors because they like to record crickets at night and the music from the house would interrupt their recordings. But Mary Kay and Ashley solved the case, don't you worry. That was horrifying and I wouldn't even want Liam to be reading this. <laughs> so to sum up, this was me in fourth grade. Weird mini pay tales graphic tees, usually ones that said drama queen or angel in little sequins. I do remember this specific shirt fondly and it said drama queen and chokers, which I probably just wasn't allowed to wear in my school photo. I think you can also see a little sheen of lip gloss in this and I think I got away with that because it was glossy red lip smackers. So yeah. Glitter was a thing that I apparently loved in fourth grade. <laughs> Though I've realized this actually, I think, was probably my school photo from fifth grade. And the one that I showed you earlier was the summer before fourth grade. That's why my hair is a little different. I look a little different. But still technically nine in this photo. In fourth grade, we had bangs. And uh, there was a lot of butterfly clips involved. So I have all those ready for the next episode. Final thoughts. I mean, you were here for all of them. I made some realizations. I felt nostalgia. I felt underwhelmed. And I actually found out that Liam reads The Babysitter's Club. It has been adapted, changed, altered. It's evolved into graphic novels and he's read them at school. He was telling me his favorite is uh, Stacy's Secret or whatever. And I'll go ahead and pass these along to him, which I think he'll be interested in in the coming years. These ones, while fun and enjoyable in their time, not to hate on, you know, classic Judy Bloom. They're good for what they did in their time, but these don't hold up, in my opinion. I should definitely check out some more Judy Bloom though and see how I feel about her other work as a 29 year old. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Regardless of how I felt or could have felt towards any of these books, this week is a success because it was just a chill time. It was fun, it was lighthearted, and I feel a renewed sense of joy in books. And let me know if you have reread any books that you read as a child and how that experience was for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, let me know if you want me to do more and I will see you later. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. I am having these memories of putting these in my hair, these little evil elastics. 
and how I would tighten it and it would cause a little bump and I'd have to do it five times and I'd throw a little fit before school about how my weird little elastics just wouldn't go in properly. I also remember my mom having to cut these out sometimes if they got too tangled. It would be a couple more years until I discovered straighteners and curlers, which would drastically improve my relationship with my hair. Yeah, it's stuck. Mommy?